Hey folks, welcome back to the old jarhead where I like to abuse things to find out whether or not they really do what they're supposed to do. And today, I'm gonna abuse an all-in-one system that I built in my last video to show you how to hook up a battery like this 48 volt battery to an all-in-one system like the Lee Time 3500 watt solar inverter charger. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll drop a link down below for you to check that one out. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna find out, does this perform the way it's supposed to perform? I'm only gonna test the DC side running off of the battery because I think for a system like this, what's really important to most people anyway, at least to me it is, is whether or not this would run my off-grid cabin and do everything I need to do at my off-grid cabin or work as an emergency backup for my house in a major outage. Now what I've got is I've got a 5120 watt hour battery, so we're talking over five kilowatts. When I built the system, I hooked up my ceramic heater, which can draw close to 1200 watts, and I also hooked up a handheld heat gun, which can draw up to 300 watts. And it ran both of those no problem at all. It was quite a bit quieter than any power stations I've run. That probably shouldn't be a big surprise because this is a dedicated system. There's no battery attached to it or anything like that. It's just an inverter and a charger and a solar and PPT charge controller. Now, what we're gonna do is I've been building a chicken coop, a new chicken coop for my chickens, and I need to get some wood that's been ripped on my table saw, maybe planed on my planer, and then put on my miter saw to cut it to length. So. Could this run all of that? Because frankly, if this can run a planer, a table saw, and a miter saw, well then it can run your refrigerator and your freezer and your microwave and some lights, because really, ultimately, that's what you're gonna wanna be able to do, right? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab some wood in my messy shop, and I'm gonna go ahead and first, I think I'll probably run it through the planer a couple times and smooth it out a little bit. Then I'll throw it on my table saw, and I'll rip it down, and then I'll take it over to my miter saw and cut it to length. And if I can do all of that on this system, well then I think it'll run just about anything you wanna be able to run with it. Keep watching, find out whether I let the smoke out. Dust collector on. All right, here we go. Fifty nine watts. Wow. <laughs> Let me get some dust off. So what I did is I went ahead and I ran that one by six and a bit. It's rough sawn pine through my planer first, and it bogged down a couple times on the planer, which would happen normally, whether I was hooked into utility power or hooked up to this setup right here, and it actually peaked at 3,680 watts. <laughs> but that inverter can peak at over 6,000 watts. It handled it just fine. It actually gave me that peak. Now, the highest load it took, other than that overload peak, was 1,859 watts and it drove that just fine as I repeatedly ran that one by through my planer to get it smooth. Then, after shutting that down, I went over and I hooked up my table saw, and I ran it through the table saw. No problem. Took off half an inch on either side, got it down to five and a half inches. Then I ran it over to my miter saw, but I forgot to run my extension cord over to my miter saw to make the cuts I made. You know what? I better go do that. Hold on a second. All right, this time I actually hooked up the extension cord to my miter saw. We'll run a couple cuts on the miter saw, see what kind of power it took. All right, 
there we go. 1,370. Well, there you have it, folks. <laughs> 1,370 on the miter saw. We saw over 1,800 on the planer. I'm sure that table saw is somewhere in the middle there. It draws quite a bit of power, but eh, you know, it's like the miter saw just running longer. And we're still sitting at 95% state of charge. So that took 2% to do all of that work. I could definitely run this to, well, power my shop. And with over 5,000 watt hours of battery, I'm guessing that with full solar here, running this thing to charge this battery up, it would work great. Now there's a couple features that I really like with this all-in-one inverter system here. And before I continue, let me tell you, this is not a sponsored video. Yes, lead time did provide me with what I've got here, but they did that for another video, not this one. I don't have to make this one. I did this one because I wanted to find out, could I push this system or not? Would I let the smoke out or would it keep running? Well, guess what? Folks, it's still running. Now there's a couple things that I like about this system that I thought I would mention today. First setting that you have is grid first, and it switches only to the inverter if the power fails or the utility grid fails, so that's kind of nice. The second setting is inverter first, where it will run off of the battery, and when the battery reaches the set points that you determine, it'll switch back to grid. So basically, if it charges up the battery, the battery's good to go, it'll run off of that. But when it hits that low point, it'll go ahead and switch to utility power, charge the battery back up, and then go back to battery. You can also set up the charging to go from the grid first or MPPT solar first, or combination of both of those, so that's kind of nice. So I really like the fact that I can set this up, plug this into the grid, and you tell it run off of the battery and solar, unless the battery gets too low, there's not enough solar, then go to grid to charge it back up. Or you could set it the other way, run off a utility, but if the utility power fails, then switch over and run off the battery, and of course solar if you've got enough sunlight. That's actually really nice. It makes it a, an emergency backup type system. Now the other thing that you can do with this, instead of hooking up utility power to it, you could hook a generator directly to it. Then of course you'd want to set it up to run off of the battery, but I suppose you could leave it to utility power and as long as the generator's running, it's gonna run off the generator. So there, there are those settings. There are quite a few settings. You can change the charging settings for your battery. I've got it set at 15 amps. You can run it all the way up to 80 amps. That's pretty incredible. Of course, you're gonna need a lot of solar or the grid to do that 80 amps, but it is something that you can set it to. I have mine set at 15, so that if I have it plugged into the grid, the way I have it hooked up now, running through a wall socket that's only 15 amps, well, I don't wanna put a whole lot of amperage through that, so I have it down to 15 amps, so it'll run off of that circuit just fine, or I could run it off a 20 amp circuit, it'd be fine. And with one battery, I'm not gonna have to worry about it a whole lot. So all in all, I have to admit, you know, I've been a component guy for a long time and I've been looking at these all-in-one systems. I've heard a lot about them. I've even talked about this one in previous videos as well as some others. And I kept thinking I should play with one and see what I think. And while I do think that a component-based system is a, is a good way to go for those that have the, the ability, the wherewithal, the knowledge to go ahead and buy all the individual components and wire them all up and do all that kind of stuff yourself. But if you're looking for a system that's very, very simple, all you have to do is mount it on the wall, plug in your utility power, your solar panels and your batteries, hook up the output to a, a load panel or an AC panel and away you go. Well, this will absolutely do that. I've been pretty impressed with it. Super simple to set up, super easy to hook up. Frankly, anybody can do it. If you can read a manual, then you can hook this up and run it. And with a big battery like this one right here, Wow, I mean, it, it handled it in spades. The very fact that I'm sitting at 95% on the battery after doing what I've done so far with it, including running the ceramic heater, the ceramic heater and a heat gun, running the planer, the table saw, the miter saw, doing all of that, and it did it in spades, peaking it at 3,600 plus watts when I fired up these heavy hog items. I never noticed anything. Frankly, it felt like I was just running off the utility power. No problem at all. And this big golf cart battery handled it, no problem. Anyway, folks, there you have it. Pretty impressed. 
work just like it should. Meanwhile, I'm going to drop another video right here for you to check out. Thanks for watching, folks. Y'all have a great day. The old jar hit out.